الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين إنه خير ناصر ومعين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا وشفي ذنوبنا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأبي القاسم المصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله لا أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حكوكهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى كيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكلامه الكريم وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إني أنا ربك فخلعنا عليك إنك بالواد المقدس توا آمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد When Musa عليه السلام was traveling and when he reached at the holy valley and when he saw the flames of the fire he was attracted towards the flames of the fire because it was extremely dark it was a cold night he thought and he could not see his way ahead he thought that I'll get some light some fire if the fire is there and he could see the flames of the fire maybe a tribe is there they are warming themselves it is extremely cold I'll take some light and I will be able to guide and and I'll be able to show the way for myself to show the way for my family when he reaches there in reality it was not the flames of the fire but there was another noor over there that that was the light of guidance that was the light of Hidayah this is the recap of last week's much this very quickly and when he saw the light of Hidayah or the noor of guidance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a voice calling him inni ana rabbuk surely I surely I I am your Lord inni ana rabbuk fakhla an alayk remove your shoes inna ka bil wadil muqaddasitwa O Musa you have indeed reached at a holy valley so now remove your shoes when Musa alayhi salam heard this voice this was the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah created that voice to convey the message to Musa alayhi salam indeed that message was to comfort Musa so that Musa, Musa should get that tranquility now this message was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is conveying this message of risala of prophethood and the of messengership that you are my Rasul now you help you will have to do tabligh and now I'm giving you this message that is why our sixth holy imam is quoted to have said that expect unexpected he went for fire Imam Sadiq says so that he should get some fire so that he should guide his family but when he reached there he came back with the message of Risala he came back with the message of Nabuwa that you are my Rasul you are my prophet O Musa I'm giving you religion and I'm giving you this message and when Musa alayhi salam, now this was, uh, don't worry, inni ana rabbuk, rabb means parwardigar, it means the one who nurtures. I'm going to nurture you, I took care of you since you were born, and I will take care of you, inni ana rabbuk, fakhla an alayk, inna ka bil wadil muqaddasitwa, you have come to a place where it is very holy, remove your shoes. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa anakhtartuka, Fastami' lima yuha Ayat number 13 That was ayat number 12 of Surah Taha Surah Taha is the 20th chapter of Quran Majid Verse number 13 
الله سبحانه وتعالى says وأنختارتك فاستمع لما يوها and I have chosen you أختارتك وأنختارتك فاستمع لما يوها now listen carefully what is being revealed to you يعني when Allah says وأنختارتك it means I have chosen you when Allah says I have chosen you مختار أختارتك I have chosen you it means there was a choice Allah could have choose somebody else but from all those people there were many pious people but from all those people Allah says I chose Musa wa anakhtartuka now listen to my wahi fastami' lima yuha and listen what I'm going to reveal to you why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose Musa sometimes now this is when Allah says I have chosen you it means there is a matter of choice Allah chose him although there was no force it was not particular that Musa should be chosen. Sometimes it is that a person is telling you, one man show, you have to do that, whether you like it or not. You don't have any way. Now, that is where it is my way or highway. You have to do my way, isn't it? But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, I have chosen you. It means if he, Allah, has chosen you, there is a choice of Allah. Why did Allah choose him? In hadith, because our topic is, the conversation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Musa. Now Allah once told Musa that, Oh Musa, do you know why did I choose you? Musa said, Ya Allah, I don't know. He says, I chose you because unto affir wajhak afit turab. Allah says to Musa, You know why did I choose you? Because unto affir wajhak afit turab. You, oh Musa, out of your out of your humility and humbleness and submission you you are wiping your face on the sand on the earth on the ground the, when you were doing sajda your sajda was exclusively for me it was only for me the, you, you, the way you showed me humbleness and submission islam is all about submission what does islam mean islam means to submit yourself towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be receptive, to listen what Allah says, to act and implement, to follow the right path, to walk on the way of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. This is Islam. To be the real abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, to affir wajhaka fit turab. Because, O oh Musa, you were, you were wiping your face on the ground, on the earth. Your sajda was that extent. That is why I chose you as my prophet as my messenger because every prophet for it, it is in riwaya like ibrahim alayhi salam allah says to ibrahim oh ibrahim do you, do you know why did i choose you as my i have given you this title of khalilullah as khalilullah because you have got two attributes inside you two good qualities that is why i chose you as khalilullah i gave you this title of khalilullah and ibrahim said what were, what are those two good attributes oh allah allah said that you are praying tahajjud that is namaz ashab and you are very welcoming you like guests because you like guests that is why i i gave you this title of khalilullah now that was the time was different ibrahim was different now what is tell somebody that you are bringing guests aaj hu bahut busy chu aaj hamara paas time nahi molana pachi inshallah next time kai karsu Time has changed. But that was Ibrahim. That Ibrahim got this title of Khalilullah. Why? Because he used to love guests. And because he was praying tahajjud. And Musa a.s. was also told because, you, because of your long prostrations. Because of your sujood. That is why. And the style of sujood was that you were rubbing your face. And wiping your face on the ground. That, that is why we chose you as a prophet. In the time of Rasulullah, a person came with many questions to Rasulullah. And I won't pose, all, I, I won't narrate all those questions, but only one question, which relates to my topic. And which question was that? Ya Rasulullah, I want to be your neighbor on the day of judgment. What shall I do? He says to Rasulullah, I want to be your neighbor. I want to be besides you on the day of judgment. What shall I do? Rasulullah replied, Fa'atil sujuda lillah. Prolong your sajdas for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will be my neighbor on the day of judgment. Prolong your sajdas. This, this holy lady, whose shahada we shall be commemorating soon, 
and we are remembering her every Thursday in Masaib because 14th of or 15th of Jamaat al Ula till 3rd of Jamaat al Akhir. It is the days where it is quoted, it is recorded that it is her death anniversary. She is quoted to have said, the daughter of the Holy Prophet of Islam, the Holy Lady. She is quoted to have said that sajda breaks the kabbur. And when she would pray, you know, there is one sajda, it is called sajda shukr. And what is that sajda? After namaz, a person should do sajda shukr. In riwayah it has come that you are supposed to say shukr alillah hundred times and then do your hajat. But if you can't do hundred times, so at least three times. Shukr alillah, shukr alillah, shukr alillah. Balki I remember when we were young, we would go to madrasa and our madrasa would be five times a week. And we would pray all together. When it would come time of such day, shukr, we would say shukr alillah al three times. Al af three times. Atubu ilallah. Al af means sorry, O oh God. Atubu ilallah. I am turning repentant to you. Mashallah. La hawla wa la quwwata. Illa billahi al al azim. Then we would present our hajat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are being told that you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is called such that shukr after namaz. And again in riwayah it has come that if a person prays and does not do such that shukr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes his prayers and throws his prayers on his face. Why? Because you are so arrogant that you don't ask to him anything. You are not, you are not presenting your desires to him, your wishes to him. He takes your namaz and throws on your face. Sajda shukr. It is so important when a person, why? Because the best part, the best state of namaz is sujood. That is why there are two sujood in every rakah. One ruku, one qayam, one standing, one bowing. But two sujood, two prostration in every rakah. It is being liked so much because the whole body falls into prostration. A person becomes humble and humility. When a person becomes humble and humility, let us make our sajda also spiritual, not only formal, not only out of formality. Let us make spiritual. And what is that spirituality? To when we perform sujood, we should speak to ourselves. We should tell ourselves to our hearts that, Oh Allah, I want to be receptive. Whatever you tell me, whatever you want, I will act and implement according to you. When a person is receptive, then even he gets the whole world he won't take that whole world. He will see what Allah wants and what Allah likes. Do you agree with me? Shall I give you an example? In the time of our seventh holy Imam, Imam Musa ibn Jafar al-Qadhim, salawatullahi wa salamu There was a king known as Harun Rashid, a caliph. He had many sons. He had Amin, his son. He had Mamun. He had... He, he had Qasim. Now, he had distributed the governorship to his sons. And he also, one from his sons, there was one son known as Qasim. He was a righteous and pious son of Harun Rashid. He was so pious, so righteous, that when the governorship was being distributed, at that night he left Baghdad and he went to Basra. Why? He said, I don't want the governorship. And I don't want the kingdomship. I don't want the power from my father. Because this power which my father is giving me is not the right power. It is not what my Allah wants. He was receptive. He, he, he left. He escaped. And he went to Basra. When he went to Basra, he went to Bazaar of Basra. And he started standing in the Bazaar of Basra as builders. As if he was a builder. And he took his equipments with him. Abdullah Basri says, that uh, in, uh, I went to Bazaar of Basra. I saw one young man and I told him that you are standing with the builders. Can you, can you build my wall? Because my wall is about to fall. Can you renovate it? And can you help me out? When he goes there, he, he agrees. He says, yes, I, I'm ready to, to build your wall. He goes to Abdullah Basri. Abdullah Basri says that he built my wall when it happened the time of Namaz Zohar, he washed his face, his hands and his legs. He did wuhu 
and he went to pray. And then after that, he continued his work. He took only one dirham from me. He was very good. But time came that I was informed that he is in the hospital and he is on his deathbed. I was amazed. I rushed to go and visit him. When I went to visit him, he told me, Oh, Abdullah Basri, do you know who am I? Abdullah says, no. He says, I am the son of the Caliph. I am the son of Harun Rashid. My name is Qasim. And I am on my deathbed. When my father was distributing governorship, I ran and I escaped. I came to Basra. I left Baghdad. I didn't want the governorship because it was not the right way. I, because I want to be on the way which my Allah wants. I left. Now I'm dying. It is, I, it is my last moments. I'll give you this ring. Go to Baghdad and give it to my father, Harun Rashid. Every Mondays he has got an open forum. People come to meet him. When people come to meet him, convey my salams to my father, Harun Rashid, and give him this ring. Tell him it is his ring. And then, oh, Abdullah Basri, I've got my building equipments and materials. Give it to anybody who will use. I've got my Quran. Give my Quran to that person who is going to use Quran. See what he says. And who is going to have uns with Quran, that love with Quran, and who's going to recite Quran. He should not keep only on his shelf till next Ramadan when Quran Khani comes, then he should, he should take Quran. No. Give Quran to that person who is going to use and recite Quran. Oh, Abdullah Basri, you shake my shoulders. I can see my Aqa Amirul Mu'minin coming to receive me. Shake my, my shoulder. He recited Kalima and he passed away. Who was he? He was brought up at the palace of Harun Rashid, the son of the king, the son of the caliph. But environment did not affect him. Sometimes we say environment affects. It all depends upon person himself deep inside. If a person wants to change, he can change. He ran away for the straight path. He didn't live. He didn't stay in the palace of his father, of Harun Rashid. But he went to Basra. Why? Because he was receptive. We should, when we pray, we should pray in such a way that our sujood should be in such a way that, O oh Allah, make me receptive. And I should not deny the truth. I should not be obstinate. See Surah An'am. See other surahs. All these mushrikeen and all these polytheists, they were obstinate. It was because of obstinacy. They refused Islam. They refused Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they raised many objections. Like, we won't agree this prophet. Why is he a human? He should come in a form of an angel. Allah said that if he comes in a form of an angel, they will say, why is he not a human? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that even if, in any case, in Surah Furqan, there are so many objections. Why? Because of their obstinacy. They said that why this prophet is walking in the market? Why is he buying things for himself? Why is he a human? Why? Because of obstinacy. This is because of them being zid, obstinacy. When we do our sujood, what does sajda mean? Humility. Submission. And if we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that make me understand the real Islam. Make me humble, O oh Allah. Musa was chosen as a messenger because of his humility, because of his humbleness, because the style of his sajda, that he was wiping his face on the sand, on the ground. Why are we doing tayammum? When there's no water, there is lack of time, do tayammum. Eh? I shall do tayammum. Why shall I do tayammum? If it is to clean myself, then with this soil and this sand, I'm going to make myself more dirty. If I take this sand, but no, this is to remind you spiritually that you are made of this clay and then you are going to die and you will be again inserted in this clay. That is why it is to remind you. That is why you are told that to use this clay, use this soil, use this sand. This is the whole point of Islam. So that you should be receptive and you shouldn't be obstinate.
कैसे कैसे लोग थे कि उन लोग ये एनवायरमेंट ने उनको कुछ इफेक्ट नहीं किया असर नहीं गुजारा एनवायरमेंट अलग था फिर भी उन लोगों ने सोचा कि नहीं हम नहीं बदलेंगे हमें सीधा रास्ता मिल गया और हमेशा दुआ करना चाहिए कि खुदा हमेशा हमें सीधे रास्ते पर रखे ये बड़ी दुआ है कि आके बत बैर हो द डेस्टिनी शुड बी गुड कितने ऐसे लोग थे कि पूरी जिंदगी तीस साल चालीस साल अच्छे थे तारीख में आप देखें उठा के देख लीजिए ये तो मौला कायनात ने वसीयत भी की इमाम हसन से कि मेरे फर्जंद ए मेरे लाल हसन कितने ऐसे लोग थे कि उनकी इब्तदाई तो इब्तदाई तो अच्छी थी लेकिन इंतहा बुरा था और कितने ऐसे लोग थे कितने ऐसे लोग थे कि इब्तदाई अच्छी थी इंतहा ही बुरा हुआ बुरा हो गया तो हमें दुआ भी करनी चाहिए कि अगर इब्तदाई अच्छी है तो इंतहा भी हमेशा अच्छी होनी चाहिए इंपॉर्टेंट क्या है इंतहा एट द एंड द डेस्टिनी ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि ये हमेशा अच्छी होनी चाहिए इसलिए तो दुआ भी हम यही करते हैं ना अल्लाहुम्मा की जियारत में आखिर में यह दुआ है इमाम रजा में सिखाते हैं कि खुदाया हम दुआ करते हैं कि हमारा अख्ताम सदत के साथ करो अच्छी तरीके से मेक अवर डेस्टिनी गुड ये दुआ होनी चाहिए हमारी भी एक वाक्य और आपकी जहमत तमाम अब आपने सुना होगा कि अबू जहल के जमाने में अबू जहल का काम यही था कि जितने लोग इस्लाम को एक्सेप्ट किया अबू जहल उन लोगों को हमेशा टॉर्चर कर रहा था और इस्लाम से उनको निकालता था और ब्रेन वॉश कर रहा था उनमें से अबू जहल का भाई जिसका नाम अयाश था अबू जहल का सबसे छोटा भाई अयाश था उसने इस्लाम को कबूल किया और खुद अयाश आ गए रसूल के पास के या रसूल अल्लाह हमने तो इस्लाम को कबूल कर लिया लेकिन ये मेरा मेरे बड़े भाई अबू जहल मुझे जान से मार डालेंगे ये मुझे जिंदा नहीं रहने देंगे दे ही विल कट मी इनटू पीसेस ऐसा करे आपके मुझे आप कहीं पे भेज दे रसूल ने अयाश को एविसिनिया भेजा हा बश तुम वहां पे जा वहां पे रहो अगर ये तुम्हें जा आराम से नहीं रहने देंगे वहां पे वो गए वहां पे रहे फिर दोबारा मक्के में आए दोबारा रसूल ने उनको यानी उनकी जिंदगी में अयाश ने दो हिजरत की हिजरत करना आसान नहीं है सख्त काम है बच्चों के साथ फैमिली के साथ वहां से निकलकर दोबारा अयाश को भेजा गया मदीना मदीना गए जब रसूल ने हिजरत की और अयाश भी मदीना में रहे उनको तो मजा आया कि अब हम रसूल की खिदमत में होंगे तो उनको बहुत मजा आया अबू जहल को पता चला अबू जहल वहां पे गया और रसूल की खिदमत में पहुंचता है और अबू जहल बहाना करता है कि हमारी वालिदा बहुत मरीज है और ये हम हमसे सबसे छोटा है ये छोटा भाई है इनको आप इजाजत दें हम इनको ले जाए ताकि मक्का में और उनकी वालिदा के साथ अयादत की जाए हालांकि फकत बहाना था जब वहां पे पहुंचा तो इनको रस्सी बांधा गया अयाश को और कू मक्के की गलियों में अयाश को घसीटा गया फिर अबू जहल चीखता था कि ए जवानो मक्का के जवानों देखो हम ऐसे करते इफ अलुहा कथा बिशुबाइहा हम जवानों के साथ ऐसे सलूक करते हैं जो लोग बुध परस्ती को छोड़ते हैं और इस्लाम की तरफ जाते हैं उनका हाल हम ऐसे करने वाले हैं यानी दिस शुड बी अलेसन टू अदर्स के लोग इस्लाम की तरफ ना जाए फिर उनको जिंदान किया गया हुजूर ने मदीने में कहा मन ली अयाश कौन है जो अयाश को नजात दे सकता है तो एक सहाबी खड़ा हुआ जिसका नाम हिशाम था या रसूल में नजात दे सकता हूं वहां पे वो गए उनको पता नहीं था कि अयाश कहा है लेकिन ऐसे ऐसे जिंदान में अयाश को रखा गया कि उसमें छत भी नहीं था और मक, मक्के की गर्मी बहुत बुरी थी और उनको खाना भी भेजा जाता था एक औरत जाती थी उनको खाना देने जा रही थी खाना भी सही तरीके से नहीं दिया जाता था हिशाम ने फकत गौर फिक्र किया कि औरत कहा जाती उसने स्पाई किया उसको पता चला कि इस प्रीजन में इस जिंदान में अयाश है जब वो औरत चली गई क्योंकि खुला खुला जिंदान था ऊपर से हिशाम गया और उसने क्योंकि वो बांध उनको बांधा गया था रस्सी खोला गया और उनको भगा दिया फिर वो चले गए कहा मदीने की तरफ रसूल के पास यानी कहने का मकसद ये है ऐसे ऐसे हालात थे इस्लाम के ऊपर आज हमें इस्लाम बहुत आसानी से मिल गया और मिलता भी है कुरान की तफसीर कुरान के बारे में ये वायस आसानी से मिलता है 
ائمہ کے احادیث آسانی سے ہمارے علماء نے کس طریقے سے اسلام کو بچایا ہمارے علماء پریزنز میں تھے زندان میں تھے خون کے ذریعے کتب لکھا گیا ہے شرح لمعہ لمعہ کی کتاب جو فقہ کی کتاب حوضہ میں پڑھائی جاتی تھی یہ خود اوتھر جو شہید ہے اس نے کیسے لکھا لمعہ کو اپنے خون کے ذریعے اپنے خون کے ذریعے اس نے کتاب کو لکھا یعنی ایسے ایسے حالات آئے ہیں اسلام پر ہم بہت خوش نصیب ہیں کہ آسانی طریقے سے ہمیں اسلام ملتا ہے آسانی طریقے سے مجلس پر گزار ہوتی ہے انٹرنیٹ کے ذریعے ہمیں راہ راست مل جاتا ہے ہاں اگر یہ دن زہرہ کے دن ہے زہرہ کے ایام ہے ابھی آپ نے زہرہ کی طرف سے زہرہ کے حوالے سے یہ حدیث سنی کہ زہرہ نے کہا کیا کہا زہرہ نے زہرہ نے فرمایا کہ سجدہ تکبر کو توڑتا ہے زہرہ کی شہادت کے وقت میں بھی ذکر الہی میں مصروف تھی اسما سے یہی کہا گیا تھا اسما وضو کا پانی لاؤ تاکہ میں وضو کرو زہرہ نے وضو کیا وضو کرنے کے بعد اسما سے کہتی ہے کہ اسما میں اس حجرے میں جاتی ہوں جب تک میری آواز آئے حمد و سنا کی تسبیح کی تو سمجھنا رسول کی بیٹی زندہ ہے اور جب تک میری آواز تھم جائے تو سمجھنا کہ رسول کی بیٹی اس دنیا سے رہلت کر گئی اسما کہتی ہے جب تک آواز آتی رہی میں سمجھتی گئی کہ زہرہ زندہ ہے ایک مرتبہ زہرہ کی آواز تھم گئی میں نے اپنی آواز کو بلند کیا بنت رسول اللہ بنت رسول اللہ لیکن جب بی بی نے جواب نہیں دیا تو میں سمجھ گئی کہ رسول کی بیٹی اس دنیا سے رہلت کر گئی ایک مرتبہ ایک حاضہ دارو آپ جانتے ہیں یہ غم بہت بڑا غم ہے علامہ امینی کہتے ہیں آیت اللہ امینی کہتے ہیں کہ ہمارے لئے یہ بہت بڑا زخم ہے کونزا زخم یہ دروازہ کا زخم یہ دروازہ جب زہرہ کے اوپر گرایا گیا کچھ می زہرہ کے بازو پر پیوست ہو گئے دروازہ جب گرا ایک مرتبہ فضہ کو پکارا فضہ الیہ الیہ فضہ او میری طرف میری پسلیاں ٹوٹ گئی مولا کائنات نے جب زہرہ کو گسل دیا ایک مرتبہ اصحاب کہتے ہیں کہ ہم مسجد میں تھے لیکن علی مرتضی جب زہرہ کو گسل دیتے تھے تو ان کی رونے کی آواز مسجد تک پہنچی اصحاب کہتے ہیں ہم گئے علی کے پاس یا علی رونے کا سبب کیا ہے مولا کائنات نے فرمایا اے اصحاب گسل کرتے کرتے میرے ہاتھ زہرہ کے پہلو پر پہنچے تو میں نے دیکھا زہرہ کے پہلو شکستا ہے لیکن زہرہ نے شکایت تک نہیں کی اسی لیے جب مولا کائنات تدفین کے لیے قبر میں زہرہ کے بدن اقدس کو لٹاتے ہیں تو ایک مرتبہ قبر سے دو ہاتھ نمودار ہوئے رسول کے دو ہاتھ نمودار ہوئے یا علی میری امانت کو لائی ہے مولا کائنات نے ایک جملہ کا یا رسول اللہ نو سال پہلے جو امانت آپ نے مجھے دی وہ امانت صحیح و سالم تھی نو سال کے بعد جب یہ امانت دیتا ہو تو زخمی واپس پلتا تھا تدفین کے بعد غمبد خزرہ پر نگاہ کرتے ہیں میرے مولا کائنات اور ایک مردبہ کہتے ہیں یا رسول اللہ زہرہ کی شہادت کے بعد علی کا حوصلہ ٹوٹ گیا علی کا صبر ٹوٹ گیا اللہ لعنت اللہ علی القوم الظالمین وسیعلم اللذین ظلموا ایم کلبی انقالبون انہا لللہ و انہا الیہ راجعون رضم بقضائه وتسليما لأمره